And welcome back to the 2018 Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links World Championship here in Chiba, Japan. I'm Ollie Wyman, also known as the Neo Spatian Aqua Dolphin. This is the line that I is most often requested by fans. My favorite line that I ever did in Yu-Gi-Oh!, which is basically... <laughs> so that's my that's my 15 minutes of fame right there. Yeah, right here next to Aqua Dolphin himself. I'm Billy Brake, <laughs> and uh, we are here with round six of Duel Links Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship 2018. I'm Mike Hannum, also proud to be sitting next to Aqua Dolphin. <laughs> Unfortunately, Neospatian Aqua Dolphin hasn't really had much of an impact in Duel Links as much as it has in the TCG, where we actually get to see that card being played yes. on tournament to tournament. Yeah, being a level 3 yeah. warrior is fantastic. But and that's, that's incredible, because in many ways, Duel Links is years behind the CCG. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess, I guess Aqua Dolphin was never really used when it came out, and it took years to get the appreciation it deserves, right. so maybe uh, years down the line. All right, well, See, here, we're jumping in. We found respect for Aqua Dolphin. Yeah, most certainly. We're jumping in here to round six. We have Patricio versus uh, Waz, sorry, Wa well, Silent Loft. Silent Loft. So we see, right. we see we see Kaiba. We've been talking before. When you see Kaiba, and you, when you start your Duel Links match, you want to try and assess what deck they could be using based upon the dual skill that the character has. We've been saying Kaiba has beatdown, so more than likely we see Fur Hires coming here from the blue side, and Patricio is probably going to be playing the Switcheroo Spellbooks. That's what most common skill is used with Bandit Keith, even though he does have some other ones that do see play. So this is going to be a standard matchup, and not the, le well, Legendary decks will be waiting for game two, the thing that I'm most excited about, because I love seeing the Legendary decks, seeing the car cards like Submarine Roy used and actually deciding the games. But yeah, we're going to start with a Dompa, not a beat, so not exactly the great start. Maybe we'll see a summon of a Dyna or a Wiz here. We might. Oh, so he'll use uh, Dompa's effect to special summon Dyna from his hand, and Dyna might protect the Dompa since the Dompa can't be attacked while Dyna's on face up on the field. Yeah, yeah but while the Dyna's there, you have to attack it first. Not the greatest start for a fur hire deck, only having uh, that one monster in time mode. And yeah, we see the Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. We haven't seen Spellbooks not be able to play any cards, you know, the, and Brick, like, you know, the one downside. As long as they open up that secret to the uh, Spellbook Magician of Prophecy, uh, they're able to get things going. We're going to be able to hopefully set up a play to where he's going to be able to activate Spellbook of the Power to power up his Spellbook Magician, uh, fade away maybe the Dyna, and uh, then be able to search and get rid of both the monsters at the same time, and hopefully also have a Spellbook of Fate set to be able to remove whatever monster uh, Silent Loft might summon next turn. It's looking fairly likely that that may happen. Yep, here comes the Spellbook of the Power. Because you're able to activate the Spellbook of the Power, that puts that third Spellbook in the grave for you. It'll just turn your fate online right away. So here comes that Spellbook of the Fate. Probably going to banish the three Spellbooks to banish that Dyna from the field. Kind of an interesting decision to start this. You could kind of like make the read that, like, oh, it's Bandit Keith. This is probably Spellbooks. And maybe just hold all your monsters in your hand and not, like, invest into a board. Like, this is a play you'd want to make against, like, maybe a Fur Hire Mirror Match to have two monsters just to make sure your life doesn't get reduced to zero. But against Spellbooks, you don't really have to worry about them OTKing you necessarily. Right. D don't you bit it think it's a bit presumptuous, though, to think that just because the opponent's Bandit Keith playing Switcheroo, he's running Spellbooks? Because I feel like that's a very versatile ability that works with pretty much any deck. This is true, uh, but yeah, in the community is just have is most of the time it's almost I would say like eight out of ten, nine out of ten, maybe more that Van Keith yeah. you're going to see Spellbooks behind it. But there is like a yeah, Switcheroo um, like masked heroes, so maybe he was kind of worried about that as well. I've, I've seen Switcheroo used with Amazonas as well. Oh, even Amazonas to improve the card selection to make sure you draw the onslaught. Yeah, or you get or that princess. like second onslaught and you don't need it, you can shuffle right. it back and switch it so, out. Um, but usually it's like an also indication that the there's a Cosmic Cyclone somewhere in the deck. Because Cosmic Cyclone, paying a 1,000 to be able to banish a card, automatically enables that dual skill to be activated. That's true. And Switcheroo also is more typical of slower decks, since mm -hmm. they do have to take damage to even get the ability online. Whereas Kaiba's beatdown skill is useful immediately, as long as you can summon a high-level monster to the field. All um, right. So the for higher player is taking his time thinking. What can he do about... A spellbook of faith that is probably more than likely face down, if not just that, a, a treacherous trap, or maybe just a spellbook of organization. Here comes Kaiba. He summons a monster in attack position. Seal strategist for hire. All right, so it's actually pretty important that that Dyna got banished, so the seal wouldn't be able to out of it. Doesn't look like he has any other fur hire monsters to special summon with that seal, though. So it's just going to go straight to battle phase and attack. So even though he didn't get fate, uh, fated, it still. 
just on the field. Not enough, not enough monsters here. No beat for the fur hire player. That's rough. Spellbook Magician and Prophecy is destroyed in battle, and then uh, Cosmic Cyclone comes down to banish the face down Forbidden Lance that Daeub set. That Forbidden Chalice, yeah. The oh, Forbidden Chalice. <laughs> it's Sorry. Okay. Forbidden but Lance is not uh, in Duel Links. In Duel Links. So it looks like he did have the Spellbook Organization set and uh, the Cosmic Cyclone, so no fates even banished. So it's unfortunate that uh, Silent Loft wasn't able to have more uh, for higher monsters because there would have been nothing he could do about it. None of those trap cards actually would have stopped him from summoning all the monsters. So that was his, like, I feel like that was his window if to win this game yes. was this one turn. But well, yes, uh, arguably that window would have still, he would have gotten through that window had he not committed those monsters to the field on his first turn, turn and then just had to lost make, them all. And if he just made the read that maybe this is Spellbooks. But sometimes you just want to you know, play it safe. But we do see a Silent Magician coming down, tripping off the Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. This game is pretty much all but over. It's going to be very hard for Silent Loft to come back. Because right. we're going to yeah, have a Fate set and be able to negate a spell. So there's going to be no mayhem to be an extender, so he's not like cut off from everything. Yeah, and Thaib does need a number of cards in order to be able to swarm the field with his fur hire monsters, or should I say monsters fur hire. <laughs> <laughs> and with only one card in his hand and his strategist getting destroyed, I don't really see much of a comeback here. Yep, well, so he's going to just go ahead and attack with the Silent Magician. So even though he does get his own monster destroyed, when it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, he's able to special summon that Silent Magician level 8 from his deck, ignoring the summoning conditions. So now he has a 3,500 attack monster with only oh. 3,000 life point left. So it's over oh. now. Yep, he'll be able to activate that fate from his hand, banish the monster, and declare a direct attack. And there we go. Game one's going to end just like that, and we'll see Spellbooks easily taking down Fur Hire. So a lot of people think Fur Hire is just the best deck, the deck to beat, but if you're able to clear their board and stop their one monster, it's just as fragile as any other deck. Right. I have to say, I'm, I, it's really unfortunate that <coughs> Japanese players don't get to enjoy the marvelous puns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they have their own sort of forms of pun, but that was a great game. But now we're moving on to my favorite part of the World Championship, and that is the legendary decks. We get to see the characters use their cards. Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing uh, Girgia or it looks like, ooh, Dark Magician. Those are two decks that I really like seeing. Uh, Girgia we've seen be very solid because of Drilleroid. Where are my Destiny heroes? I think we might, there might be a Destiny hero. And I believe there is one. I believe Just one of the players one. is using Destiny heroes. They are both using uh, Gear Gear, so we might see that Gear Gear mirror match with the Drill Roids and stuff. But there is, yeah, Destiny here. It is Astro Phoenix. Maybe we'll see a chance for Astro Phoenix to shine. There we go. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. <clears throat> yep, and with the legendary deck, if you do use Astro Phoenix, he's using the two copies of Destiny Hero Plasma. As One of my required. Yep, as required. One of my favorite cards of all time. Even though it requires three tribute summons, when it hits the field, you can target one of your opponent's monsters, equip it to the plasma, it negates all your opponent's monster mm -hmm. effects, and gains half the attack of that monster that it yeah. sucked up. Yeah, so if, you're, you're, if you're curious about which cards are required for which duelists in these legendary duels, uh, you can actually check in-app, in the Duel Links app, and you can actually see what the uh, legal decks are for this tournament. All right, so it does look like we are going to have Cyrus with his Roids and Gear Gear deck against Arcana and the Dark Magicians. He's using an actual full-on Dark Magician deck. I'm pretty sure, not a Spellbook Dark Magician deck. Give me a second. Yeah, no, this is just a this is a Dark Magician deck, a Silent Magician Dark Magician deck. This is the deck I was excited to see this weekend. I would expect nothing less from the master of the Dark Magician. <laughs> Self-proclaimed. Self <laughs> I'm not sure Yugi would agree. He's not really a very good friend. <laughs> All right, so we see uh, Patricio going first here, opening up with the Geary Attacker, and it ties with Brethren. The best opening you could hope for. He's going to pay that 2,000 life points, special summon two monsters of the same type, same level, and same attribute. This so is what the deck is all about. Yep, we haven't actually seen them open up with the like, Geary monster and the ties with Brethren first uh, today, but when they do, it's everything they could possibly want. If they can back it up with a trap card like Pulse Mines, wow. he's able to trigger his dual skill immediately by paying the 2,000 life points to be able to just add a Drill Roid from his deck to his hand. Plus he has three monsters on the field. That's a nice first turn. Mm -hmm. You have two cards in the back, probably a Pulse mindset. It's going to be hard for the Dark Magician uh, to be able to do anything. But he does have cards like Dark Magic Attack, which can destroy. Well, Dark Magic Curtain is going to cost oh, half wow. his life points, especially when Dark Magician from the deck. So now we'll have to see what else he has to follow it up. Once, once again, I love the uh, animations to watch the cards come in as the signature. Uh, their signature card is played. But you'll see this Dark Magician's uh, animation is a little different than the one we saw when Yami Yugi summons it. It's a different Dark Magician. Now, wh what's up with that? There's two, d they're the same stats, 
they do the same thing. They just have different outfits. Right? Yep, yeah, yeah, basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Arcana wants you know he wants to be the master yeah. of magicians. So master of magicians ability is activated. He at random he adds a random dark magician card, dark magic card to his hand. Looks like he may have gotten the dark magic attack, yep. unless that was already in his hand. So, yeah, dark magic attacks can be able to destroy all the spell and trap cards on Cyrus' side of the field. We'll see a chain here from Super Rush Headlong. To protect his Geary attacker, attacker, he's going to call Dark, so he won't be able to destroy it by battle. Otherwise, his Dark Magician would be destroyed. So now that the, if the attacker survives, he'll be able to flip it face down by its effect and then manually flip it back up and possibly destroy this yeah. Dark Magician yeah. and attack for game. He must have protected one of his other monsters. No, he protected yeah, the Geary Anchor. I'm Geary sorry Anchor. if I misspoke and said attack, okay. attacker, but yeah, Geary Anchor was the one he targeted with Super Rush at long. Because yeah. that's the one that destroys monsters. That's right. the one you want to have on the field. Sense. So here we go. We're going to see the activation of Anchor. But it's a treacherous trap hole. One of the best oh. cards against Girgia. Girgia very reliant upon having monsters on your board to do anything. And treacherous trap hole taking them down. That was exactly what he needed. So a really good opening hand here from both players. Just We're seeing both their decks operate at maximum efficiency here. Just like that, he undid Ties of the Brethren. It looks like we probably Roy have another attacks. Yeah, Super Rush Headlong from the hand. Yep. So he's going to call Dark. And any Dark monster that Droid battles with this turn is going to be destroyed before damage calculation. So. Oof. But all he's left is with this one Drillroid. So yeah. if Silent Loft is going to be able to figure out how to summon a Dark Magician to the field, maybe a Magician's Rod or something. Or an Ancient, ancient Rules. rules. <laughs> he special summons Dark Magician from his hand. Once again, <laughs> the greatest <laughs> Magician of all. <laughs> <laughs> now here comes the Dark Magician. He's going to be able to attack over the Drillroid, and this duel is all but finished now. Oh, it might be finished this turn with the normal summon of Legion yep. Team Jester. There we so. go. We're going to see Cyrus' life points reduced to zero and 2,200 points of damage. Yep, so we're going to even this match out at one win apiece. And we're going to go, the next game will be with between two standard decks. And then once that, we know that we're going to be seeing a game four now, so we'll be able to see both their legendary decks yes. again, too. So that's always exciting. <laughs> oh, Cyrus is defeated. <laughs> Sorry, Ooh. but I won't run and hide like I used to. It's okay. You have to, it's okay. You don't have to run and hide when you lose. You got to focus on that next game. You know, tighten things up there, Cyrus. All right. So Silent Loft is the winner. Yeah. That uh, well done. That was a fantastic start. That really for was for the Gergia deck. But an even more so. fantastic start for the Dark Magician deck. Yeah. With the Dark Magic Attack being added off the dual skill probably just yeah, turned the tides completely. Because if he wasn't able to use that Dark Magic Attack, he would have walked into that Super Rush headlong, losing that Dark Magician, and would have been completely different. But yeah, the dual skill adding yeah. the Dark Magic Attack, changing everything. And both duelists demonstrated in that duel uh, the value of cards that allow you to pay your own life points. To enable they, the dual skill. Yeah, they both paid 2,000 life points on their first turn to use a dual skill that added a free card to their hand. Uh, so... And here we go with game three. Yeah, that was a very good example of how to how you can use dual skills despite the cost. You don't have to wait for your opponent to attack you. You just make it happen yourself. Right. It's, it's, it's kind of odd how in Duel Links, paying life points can sometimes be a benefit because it puts those skills online. Still don't like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it does look like we have Joey here. Joey's dual skill usually last gamble, which uh, after turn five, you can pay your life points all the way down to 100, discard two cards from your hand, roll a die, and you draw that many cards. I love that skill. It's a lot of fun. They forgot to spell monster with an A. <laughs> monster. <Joey>. Monster. <laughs> <laughs> So it looks like Odeon, we're going to probably have an endless Trap Hill Amazonas deck. Ooh, see the Summon of Amazonas Tiger, one of my favorite cards in the Amazonas deck right now. If you're able to get Amazonas Princess on the field, Amazonas Queen, and then an Amazonas Tiger, your Amazonas Tiger can't be destroyed by battle. They have to attack it, and you'll be able to protect your princess and be able to keep using its effect. But right now we just have the Tiger attacking battery and microcell. So since it finally we see a microcell effect activate, it's flipped face up. He's able to draw a card after he special summons a Battery Man from his deck. Battery Man Solar hits the field. Battery Man Solar's effect's going to activate. Send a Battery Man Solar. So just like that, there's two Battery Man in the graveyard, and we'll see him to draw a card. Anytime, it's kind of like uh, similar to Sylvan and Kaga Mushroom. Like, it is a flip effect monster kind of slow to set, but if you do get its effect off, it's huge to turn the tides for the Battery Man player. Right, so battery, battery man players want battery man monsters in the gra uh, graveyard so that they can summon industrial strength uh, and take advantage of its effect, which also requires you to banish battery man from your graveyard. 
Uh, so Snipe Hunter usually helps to achieve that goal. But the here, of Canadia was, put it face down. here it was put face down by Canadia. And it looks like another copy of Canadia, so we're probably also going to see the chain from the Canadia. He just used the special one and back to the graveyard. So just like that, he has two monsters on the field. And wow. So Battery Man Solar's attack is stopped. You can see Canadia come back from the graveyard. Now this is turn three, so the next turn is going to be turn four. So the next Joey turn is turn five, so his dual skill will be able to be activated on his next turn if uh, Patricio is not able to reduce his life all the way down to zero. So he draws, sets the card face down, and sets a monster. I'm assuming it's probably an Amazonist baby tiger because you can't control two Amazonist tigers at the same time. So since his name becomes Amazonist Tiger, uh, you're just going to set that card face down because it's not really doing anything in his hand at the moment. And since you're able to bring it back from the graveyard anytime you summon an Amazonist monster, it's no reason to not set it face down. Oh, Thunder Seahorse is a pretty good top deck here. He uses it to add two more copies to his hand. Obviously having more cards in his hand is beneficial for if and when he uses his last gamble skill. He flips Solar. It looks like yeah, he's going to wait to use that last gamble skill because he did because he since he used the Thunder Seahorse effect this turn. Oh, he does have an onslaught to activate, which is good because it's going to be banishing the Battery Man. The less Battery Man in the graveyard, the less fuel the Industrial Strength has to destroy Odeon's field. Industrial Strength, once it does hit the field, is really good against Amazonas, though, because just by banishing um, a Battery Man, you're able to destroy a monster and a Speller Trap card. Right, so it was an Amazon's Baby Tiger he set since he wasn't able to summon it since he had control too, but now he's able to flip it face up. 600 attack and attack the face down monster. Maybe another Microcell? Yep. It is indeed. <laughs> Microcell flips, gets to special summon a monster and draw a card. But the Microcell will be banished. But yeah, things aren't looking too good for Patricio because, uh, yeah, the last gamble skill is going to be able to be activated next turn. Depending on how many copies of Industrial Strength he has, this duel could end next turn, despite look looking not so great for him, possibly. But if the last gamble could also go the wrong way, and he could just discard two cards, roll a one, go down to 100 life points, and only draw one card from it. That's the fun of last gamble. <laughs> Looks like he's going to use the Onslaught. Oh, he topped it in the Amazon as Queen. Wow. That is, way, that is huge. So he's able to summon the Amazon Queen from his hand. It's a little dangerous, though, having that baby tiger in attack position, right? Yeah, it can be, unless yeah, well, he's well, going to have to have another trap card. Industrial Strength can come down, clear the back row. All right, so here, Canadian's going to attack directly, reducing him down to 1,400 life points. All right, yeah, so the life points you take before you activate your last game of Dual School don't really matter because you're going to go down to 100 anyway. Right. I expect we'll probably see that ability used this turn. Yep, oh, here we go. Immediately. He's bringing the boom. What is he going to roll? Down to 100. A two. two. So it's going to be discard two, draw two. But then he gets to put the battery in his graveyard. He's going to banish two for an industrial strength. Do you think he has a third copy of Paleo's at Canadia set? <laughs> I mean, Floodgate Trap Hole. That's interesting. Industrial strength is going to go face down. Um, and it can't be flip summoned. Oh, he has another copy. But yep. does he have a spell or a crap card to destroy? Is there an onslaught on? Yeah, there's an onslaught. There is That's an really good. So he's going to be able to probably destroy... Mm, onslaught uh, Yeah, I don't queen. know why he destroyed the queen. Well, he can't target Cana uh, Canadian yeah, because it can't be targeted by monster effects. Oh, he can still target it. It's just unaffected. Well, it's, oh, that, that's true, actually. He could have targeted it to leave the baby tiger there. Yeah, and it would have all three monsters uh, on the field, and he wouldn't be able to special any back from It's basically I the same it, yeah, thing. Yeah, I guess it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, it's basically the same uh, scenario that we're in Can summon here. something else? <sighs> Snipe Hunter. So it, if Snipe Hunter is able to destroy this Amazon's queen here, it's going to be huge. A six. A six. <laughs> if Snipe Hunter rolls a one or a six, it doesn't destroy anything. Yeah, yeah. Will it happen three more times? We also have to remember that he is only at one. Oh, one. Oh. He is only at 100. So if he does not give her this, is it going to happen again? A uh, three. All third right. Third time's the charm. Finally, <laughs> RNG. And now it looks like he's going to attack. But it's still being only at 100. Um, Patricio is one top deck of a monster away from actually winning this game since that Snipe Hunter is in attack mode. And he was forced to discard that Sphere Karibo from his hand to get that Snipe Hunter to actually work. So very unfortunate for him that he missed three t or two times out of three. So, Amazonist Paladin is probably what Patricio is looking for here. Just anything that can attack over Snipe Hunter and deal... Or even a, a Swordswoman. Well, uh, oh yeah, the Swordswoman into the Battery Man. Oh, uh, come out. We'll end it. 
Oh, he summons a monster in attack position. And it oh, is it's the a swords swordswoman. So, so the last gamble, it, it really came down to this Snipe Hunter. If the Snipe Hunter didn't miss one of those two times, he would still have that Seer Karibo in his hand, be able to put the monster in defense mode and win the game. Oh. Instead, Swordswoman attacks the Industrial Strength, and instead of Patricio losing the 1,100 life points, it's reversed by Swordswoman's effect, and Baib loses the duel. Well, yeah, so just Joey, you live or die by the dies. Uh, Snipe Hunter just, oh, that, that's heartbreaking <laughs> to see. Just a six or one. Either one of those just has to be any other number, and that he wins hard. that game. Yeah. That, that's the gamble of Snipe Hunter. Snipe Hunter, yeah. And the last card was that Sphere Karibo that he needed. Yeah. But it was yeah. a solid match. Uh, uh, Silent Loft is now down 2 1, so he's going to have to do something. We are going to game four, so it is going to be a legendary matchup. Yes. And we are going to be seeing Aster Phoenix come out oh, against. Right. I think against uh, Cyrus, it's going to be Girgia versus Destiny Heroes. Now, traditionally, Girgia has a really good matchup against Mass Heroes. I, unfortunately, I have to <laughs> tell you this because the card, the trap card, Pulse Mines, putting all the monsters in defense mode, including monsters that are summoned after you activate Pulse Mines, such as Mass Hero Anki, all go to defense mode and it can completely shut the deck down. Gotcha. So it's going to be dependent on whether uh, Cyrus is ever to, able to draw Pulse Mines or not. I think third time will be the charm for Esther. <laughs> We'll have to see if Aster, if he does win with Astro Phoenix here, the match will be over. If not, we'll be going to a game five. All right, it looks like Astro Phoenix is going to be going first. Yes. The future is predetermined, and it's destiny that I missed reading that line. <laughs> it's my turn. That was destiny. That's my destiny. My only line. All right, so he's going to set one, two cards face down. Does he have? Doesn't look like he has a Vision Hero Vion, which is like one of the most important cards to open up with in the Destiny Hero deck, because it not only puts Destiny Hero uh, Celestial or Destiny Hero Malicious in your graveyard, it also lets you to search your deck for Polymerization, Diffuse for Destiny Hero Dangerous, which is the main fusion monster that gets everything going in your deck, which is able to send Celestial from your deck to the graveyard while emptying your hand. Oh, he does have a Vion. Chooses to set the cards face down first and then summon the Vion. I guess it makes no difference, right? It's all going to happen this turn anyway. Yeah, I, I notice a lot of players do it because uh, if they have quick plays, it'll, there'll be a delay to trigger. And instead of like turning your toggle off, they just set them down first, so they won't be able to like give away information like Forbidden Chalice. Like I would guess that one of those two cards is a Forbidden Chalice since he set them before the Vion. Could be. And even like doing setting them first in that way kind of gives away that information. Like why would you set your two or cards first? Or maybe if you just always set it first, you make your opponent it's another think you have reverse the forbidden, reverse uh, like Forbidden Chalice when you don't. Anyway, he sent Celestial to the graveyard and only has one card in his hand, so uh, there's a good chance that on his next turn. Uh, he'll be able to use its effect to draw two. Yep, with no cards in your hand and Celestial in your graveyard, except the turn that it was sent there, you're able to banish it alongside another Destiny hero and draw two cards. So Cyrus here thinking. The Candia card that I saw in the last round, mm -hmm. that synergizes well with the Amazons? Mm, yeah, Paleozo Canadia is one of the, like, the biggest cards in Amazons because you need your princess to attack to summon monsters from your deck. You also need to send cards from your hand or field of the graveyard to use its effect to summon from the deck. And so you can send that Paleozo Canadia to the graveyard and it still has an effect to be special summoned from the grave anytime a trap is activated. Huh. Baib has Girgi Anchor and Ties of the Brethren. So he pays 2,000 life points after summoning the Girgi Anchor. And now he gets to special summon two more level four earth monsters from his deck with different names. Yep, unless Patricio is able to use one of his two spell or trap cards, but nope. Changes are one of them is Forbidden Chalice, so it's probably, I would even uh, guess maybe Forbidden Chalice and Mass Change. He gets Steamroid. <laughs> he gets Steamroid, yep, and now he's going to be able to add a Roid from his deck yep. to his hand. Thanks to his skill, Fusion Reserves Roids. He's going to set one card face down, and that's going to be his turn. And it's a Cosmic Cyclone. Interesting. Ah, don't make me laugh. <sighs> With only, uh, this is, it was the Pulse Mines, but able to do it on the end phase, so the Pulse Mines isn't going to be devastating. So this is Astro Phoenix's chance right now. He needs a copy of Mass Change. All That's all he needs is one Mass Change, and this duel is over. And they lost his opportunity to attack since Ties of the Brethren costs him his battle phase. Ah, oh, doesn't look like he has the mass change though, so <laughs> this duel will continue. Ooh, Vion to defense mode. It's not what, not where he wants to be, especially with Girgi Anchor able to flip down and flip up, and the same from Girgi Attacker. Yeah, the to Girgi start Attacker. Destroying back rows and monsters. Yep. Here we go. So he's gonna go with Anchor first. 
Joker's effect is going to activate. You use the option. Oh, a Treacherous Trapple. One of the best cards in Duel Links. You'll see it in most, like, every deck. Even decks that use Trap cards still use Treacherous Trapple because it's such a momentum shift when you destroy two monsters on a field when you can only have three total. But so both of the Gear Gear monsters being destroyed. By doing so, Gear Ganker doesn't get to destroy any monsters with its effect. Because uh, it checks how many Gear Gear monsters are on the field at the resolution of the effect. Right. At the moment, there are none. That was good, but I don't know if it was good enough. We're about to find out. So another Gear Gear Anchor being summoned. Steamroid being put into attack mode. Let's but no Spiller Trap cards, and he's not going to be able to do enough, so there is still a chance for Astro Phoenix here. He does. It doesn't look like he has many cards, but he does have that Celestial in his graveyard, so if he yes. draws maybe another copy of Vision Hero Vion, he'll be able to summon it, send down a Destiny Hero, search for a Polymerization, and draw two more cards. So he has the potential to have three more cards than it appears that he has right now. And he also has his dual skill that can be activated to activate the Dark City. And any time uh, a Destiny hero battles with a monster with more attack, it gains a thousand. Yeah. That's what he's going to draw. He's going to need a Destiny, Destiny draw. draw. Destiny draw. Discarding plasma. So I'm assuming he had the plasma in his hand. So the Ooh. Destiny draw was a huge top deck because as long as that plasma was in his hand, he wouldn't be able to use the Celestial effect. So he draws a back card to set to his back row as well as Grill Dark, summons the Grill Dark, and now he gets to use Celestial to banish it and Plasma from his graveyard to draw two cards. Bam. Yep, so if he has a, if he draws a mass change here off the Celestial, this game is going to be over. He's already going to be able to take down the Gear Gear Anchor thanks to his dual skill adding a, activating that Dark City. Does he have a copy of Mass Change to finish this off? Good chance. He did just draw two cards. No oh. mass change. No mass change. Grr. But he, yeah, we'll have to see what happens. He does have two Speller Trap cards face down, even something like a Forbidden Chalice. Uh, we'd have to have, like, two Forbidden Chalice for it to be any good here. That's true, because Steamroid will gain <laughs> 500 attack points when it attacks. <laughs> yeah, Steamroid's effect actually pretty relevant. So, here we go with Drillroid. Center battle phase. Maybe... Yeah, forbidden, so forbidden Dread. Oh, no, it's Chalice. Chalice. It is two Chalices. He's going to probably double Chalice's Drill Dark, I would guess. Nope. Hmm. Looks like he's just going to... He's just show maybe he's just doing it to take less damage, but yep, not being able to draw a copy of Mass Change. And <laughs> all he needed was that one card. He wouldn't be able to take this duel, but instead we are heading for a Game 5. What's going on today, Aster? <laughs> not that I'm not excited about going to Game 5, but I'm very sad that I lost again. <laughs> Even I have the, the best cards. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, just needed that Mass Change. Was staying somewhere inside that deck. I lost to some midget with bad hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ma mass change is <laughs> mass change is pretty crucial. In yeah, it's, it is the deck. deck. Yeah, yeah we clearly. Have, yeah, it, it makes or breaks the deck because it is the best card. Turning yeah. into mass hero Anki, being able to, and all you need is that one because the mass hero Anki effect. Anytime it destroys the monster, would search for another copy of mass change and it just gets the ball completely rolling. We haven't seen an enemy controller yet in this in this round. Yeah, I don't think we've seen anyone uh, activate enemy controller at all like today, hmm. but it is definitely in some I'm of the prior games. Yeah. So this yeah. is going to be the fifth game, so we should know what the players are going to be using. I think it is going to be, it looks like, uh, a fur hire deck against, what is the other no matchup? surprise there. Deck for hire. <laughs> a deck for hire. <laughs> and, oh, it might be in, hmm, Here is it we another go for hire game deck? five. Yugimoto. Uh, Yugi oh, this is the Yugimoto uh, using my monster card skills. So he is using Amazonist. Oh, Yugimoto. <laughs> so the my monster card dual skill says uh, if you have six or more level four monsters with different names, the chances of you opening up with a level four monster are increased. Bam. Makes sense. It does make <laughs> sense. The more level four monsters you run with different names, the more you're going to draw in your opening hand. Um, yeah, the, the interesting thing about the my monster cards skill is that it forces you to use monsters with different names, so uh, oh, but the sometimes dual skill you'll use a an Amazonist card that you wouldn't typically include in an Amazonist deck. Right. But we do see the dual skill actually working. You did open up with the Amazonist Princess, which is the whole point behind using that dual skill, because you always want to see that princess with three back row, which is the most ideal opening you can possibly have with the Amazonist. And he got there. Yeah, all he needs now is to have like maybe Amazonist Queen or Amazonist Tiger in his hand, but we do have a beat coming down. Let's see if there's a Paleozoic Canadia that's going to be able to put this face down. Doesn't look like it. His monster's effect activates. Oh. 
We have forbidden a forbidden chalice. chalice. Mm -hmm. In these kind of situations, I like to activate the forbidden chalice like preemptively before they activate the effect, so that way they can't chain enemy controller to get it off the field. Oh, but, since <laughs> <laughs> but since he didn't activate it preemptively to negate the monster's effect, he's going to be able to chain, stop the chalice from negating the effect, maybe a slight misstep here, and the beat skills going to summon a monster from his hand. Billy Brake would not have fallen for that. <laughs> you are a prophet. <laughs> Up here comes the dinosaur. Dino. Oh, with he the beat, beat down. down skill, it's actually game. Yep, he's threatening. If Naib can't stop one of the attacks or change the amount of damage it inflicts. Yep. He does have the onslaught face down, so if he just has to have any Amazon's monster in his hand, he'll be able to special summon it from his hand right here and banish the Dyna if he battles with the Amazon's monster. If not, this duel could be over. He just needs any Amazon's monster in his hand. See? He's just building the suspense. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm and filled with anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> so Amazonus onslaught activates, but does he have the Amazonus in his Amazonus in his hand to actually use the effect? Yeah, special looks like summon it. it to the field and block the attack. And not only does he block the attack, he's going to get his princess back and probably be in pretty good shape. Well, depending on what Amazonus it is, he may decline to attack with the Dinah and then crash the princess in instead, right? Yeah, but as long well, as we'll see what position he puts it in. Yeah, but if he brings it in attack mode and there's another copy of enemy controller in uh, Patricio's hand, this duel could still be over. Right. So he does bring it in attack mode. Is Amazonus fighter? Does he have another copy? Does he? Did he draw both copies of enemy controller? So with it in attack position, you probably. Decline to attack with Dinah and then attack with Princess instead. Nope. Mm, yeah, nope. Doesn't look like, like he's going to go ahead and take it down. Hmm. And it is banished. And Amazon's fighter effect, uh, he doesn't take any damage. So nothing there, just losing the Dinah. He's going to take 1500 from the Amazon's Princess. And then he's going to give it back. So things are not looking too good for Patricio. No. If Sanaloff uh, was able to draw. Uh, any monster right here, it would be huge. Any Amazon's monster, you, you still could have the monster because you want to wait till your battle phase to use Onslaught's effect so you Amazon. can gain the extra 500 attack. Amazon is willpower, will special summon the fighter back from the graveyard. And if that's an Amazon is in Thaib's hand, I Just, think it's over. Yeah, barring any like Sir Karibo shenanigans, this duel is almost over. Fighter attacks directly. See if the princess is going to attack. Now he can also just send the fighter to the graveyard if he wants to special summon anything. Nope. He might just use the onslaught effect during the battle phase to summon an Amazonus and end it. He does. he does. He did draw a monster. As long as it's not the baby tiger. Yeah. <laughs> She's just going to say that. I think that's the only thing. Oh, it's got the biggest the queen. One. It's <laughs> the no most one. dangerous of all. Wow. And he's attacking directly without Asir Karibo. This duel is going to be over. And Sunloft is able to take Patricio down in an epic game five. Amazon is easily beating the Fur Hire deck. Well deck for done, hire. Silent The deck for hire. <laughs> for hire. Congrats so much. That was a great match. I well love it that we got to see games that actually went to game five. We only had a couple rounds where it was a 3-0 victory. Yeah. Mm. But that was a uh, great, uh, great match. Great match. We got to see Amazon is at full power. Amazon is one of my favorite decks in Duel Links. Yes. I Clearly, I've... It's become one of mine now, so I'm <laughs> going to have to build one. Yeah. Very I, powerful. I played it a lot more while Onslaught was still at three. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is just insane. Yeah, and the deck was able to use Enemy Controller, too. <laughs> it was so good. It still is, yeah, a great deck. But congratulations to our winner, for sure. Unfortunately, Astro Phoenix, just maybe he just wasn't the pick this weekend. <laughs> I don't know. It's certainly looking like he wasn't. Maybe I jinxed myself. <laughs> we, we cancel each other out like matter and antimatter. <laughs> oh, man. But coming up next... We are going to have the top eight for the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG World Championship of 2018. I'm very excited to see what happens in that match. I think the feature match is actually going to be it's two players that are pretty well known, one being a, a former world champion, I think, even. So I'm very excited for the next top eight match. That'll be very exciting. Con congrats, though, to all the Duel Links players. This was round yes, six. Indeed. They had one more round after this before they cut to the top two of each side to play the top four, which we're going to play out here tomorrow. Right, yep, on yes. Sunday. It's going to be fantastic. Looking forward to that. Yes, it's going to be so very we'll exciting. See you all, uh, at the next round. Yep, the next round is coming up very shortly.